All right, we're at uh, section 18.4, thermal expansion of solids and liquids. Uh, let's look at the um, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, okay, it, uh, we talked about in, uh, certainly on the upper deck of, uh, uh, I live at the medical center, I come into St. Philip's via uh, I-10, uh, and right there where, where the uh, I-10 splits to an upper deck and a lower deck, you're certainly able to see these expansion joints. If you're ever on that stretch and other stretches uh, where, they, where there's an upper level and a lower level or, or just a, a bridge, you'll see these expansion joints. And it says without these joints to separate sections of roadway on bridges, the surface would buckle due to the thermal expansion on very hot days or crack due to contraction on very cold days. Uh, and then they showed you a wall. The long vertical joint is filled with a soft material that allows the wall to expand and contract as the temperature of the bricks changes. I know in our our sidewalk out front here, um, you have, uh, you know, the, the sidewalk is, is made in, into sections and they even have, you know, I've seen them uh, make a little line that make it look like it's a maybe a four foot or, or six foot block it's really not but but about every third one of those you're going to see a, a an actual gap um sometimes it's filled with tar sometimes it's just filled with dirt but if that's an expansion joint um you need that so it doesn't uh, buckle especially in the high texas temperatures um so so things expand when heated um and why is that well let's go to the um, let me switch. Uh, the, this is just a molecular matrix, and if we, uh, I think I, I discussed it. Let me let me switch uh, the share and go over here. Uh, oops, I'm showing the wrong thing. Uh, showing the textbook. Here's this is what I want. What we have here is is just a little molecular matrix. Um, let me expand it, and if you can imagine that. Uh, you remember temperature is the kinetic energy of the uh, atoms. Uh, the the more they, uh, the higher the temperature, the more they vibrate. So if you can imagine uh, that that this is uh, uh, actually vibrating um, back and forth in this direction, uh, and it's back and forth in this direction, and it's back and forth in this direction. It's it on all axes. It's expanding. Well, if, if all of them are doing that, the whole uh, matrix is going to expand. And as the as the temperature increases, uh, all of these little agitations um, make for an expanding uh, expanding material. And that's what that's basically what happened. As you increase the temperature, the kinetic energy, the actual vibration of the molecules. Uh, increases and that increased agitation makes the whole matrix expand so that's what's uh what's occurring the um well, let's go back to the uh oh we'll do that here let's stop share and then share the uh powerpoint so so the that's what's occurring when you have uh, when you heat a material the kinetic energy uh uh causes the whole matrix to expand conversely if you cool it down that kinetic those the kinetic energy decreases so those uh molecular bonds if they're moving slower and not as much the whole thing contracts um so here's an example of a uh, a railroad track that is buckled because of the uh high temperature um and, and the, so the length changes by a, a uh, coefficient alpha. Um, the, if you take the, uh, the change in length divided by the initial length divided by the temperature, you get uh, alpha, the coefficient of thermal expansion. Um, in case you can't see it, I'll move this up. Um, so the length final minus the length initial, which is the delta L, is equal to the the coefficient of linear expansion uh, times the initial length times the change in temp temperature. 
uh, and we can mark that where we have a, a final minus initial, you can make it a delta. So delta L equals alpha L initial delta T. Um, so, and, and let me, uh, uh, before I do that, I'm, I've got a, a, an example worked out. Uh, well, let me find it here, uh, a, a homework. Uh, oh, let me find it, chapter 18 homework example. I think this is, um, this is it. And let's uh, switch gears. Stop share, and then let's share the uh, iPad. Okay, and let's read the problem statement. Um, okay, inside the wall of a house, an L-shaped section of hot water pipe consists of three parts. A straight horizontal piece, H, equals 28 centimeters. That's this, that's this part. Uh, oh, you can't see me pointing, but that's this part here, H, uh, and a um, an elbow. That's this little uh, little bit there, the elbow, and the uh, and a straight vertical piece, L, equals 134 centimeters. That's this one here. That's this length here. Um, so a stud and a and a, st a stud and a second story floorboard hold the ends of this section of copper pipe stationary. Find the magnitude and direction of the displacement of the pipe elbow when the water flow is turned on, raising the temperature of the pipe from 18 degrees C to 46.5 degrees C. Well, we have to turn over here to our um, average expansion. Come on, get big. Well, it won't get any bigger for me. Uh, so uh, this is. It said um, it's copper, right? Let's see. Uh, I know I read it somewhere. Uh, copper pipe, uh, a stud and a second story floorboard hold the ends of this section of copper pipe stationary. So we look at copper, and that's this one right here. Uh, copper, uh, the... Uh, is 17 times 10 to the six uh, degrees C, um, in a per degree C, it's a degree C inverse. Um, that's the, the alpha, the average linear expansion coefficient. Uh, so let's, uh, let's look and see how we attack the problem. To solve this, we will use equation 18.5 and table 18.1. Uh, there's the, uh, the equation uh, L, Delta L equals alpha Li delta T. Now, for the vertical length, the Y, the vertical length, delta L, um, delta L V for vertical is equal to 17, point, 17 times 10 to the 6 uh, inverse degree C times 134 centimeters um, divided by, uh, I mean, times 46.5 C minus 18.0 18, 18 degree C. And if you multiply all that out, you get 0 0.649 centimeters. Now, in the horizontal direction, um, you get uh, delta L uh, subscript H for horizontal. You have the same 17.6 times 10 to the 6 uh, degree C inverse uh, times 28 centimeters uh, times 28.5 degree C. That's what the 46.5 minus 18 is. And you get 0 0.136 uh, centimeters. And uh, we're not done. We still have the, the question. Remember, always read your question carefully. The question is find the magnitude, find the magnitude and direction of the displacement of the pipe elbow when the water flow is turned on, raising the temperature of the pipe from 18 to 46. So um, we need to find the magnitude and the direction of the displacement. Well, the displacement is, uh, the, that this arrow here is not, oops, let me, uh, let me change colors just so you can tell what I'm, uh, this arrow here is not, it's not telling you to look below, that's the displacement, that's just kind of a, a, a rough sketch of the displacement. Um, you'll see in, uh, that it's a, uh, 
not quite that, uh, it's a, got a sharper angle than I've indicated from uh, initially. So how do we get the magnitude of an X and a Y? Well, we take the square root of uh, the sum of the squares. So it's, it's 0 0.136 centimeters squared, and that's the horizontal, the X, and 0 point, uh, 0 0.0649 centimeters squared, and you get uh, 0 0.0663 centimeters, or 0 0.663 millimeters. Um, now, to get the the angle that it, you know, the, it is asking for the magnitude and direction, so the direction means uh, angle, so the theta equals the tangent inverse of, now notice, I used a minus 0 0.0649 centimeters because it, the length is expanding downward, uh, but I used a positive 136 because the, the, uh, the horizontal section is moving in that direction, uh, less so. So I've got the tangent inverse of minus uh, 0 0.0649 centimeters divided by 0 0.0136 centimeters. And if you work that out, uh, you may just get, if you don't use the minus, you'll just get uh, 78.2 degrees, but it's actually a minus 78.2 degrees. So the angle is, is going down. And that's, this is what the uh, displacement looks like. So this is, uh, what is zero point, this is 0 0.0663 centimeters. Yes, and the angle is, I've got it drawn there, 78.2 degrees. Okay, so there's an example problem of how to use this uh, uh, coefficient of linear expansion. Now, let's stop this here and go back to the, uh, the PowerPoint. Okay, uh, oops, let's see. Okay, let's, let's uh, uh, as, this is just a, this this is kind of a trick question. Some people think, well, it, as everything expands, so so the the inner dimension expands, so the so hole gets smaller. But it really, uh, as the washer is heated, all dimensions increase, including the radius of the of the hole. So everything expands outward, so the hole itself gets bigger too. That's kind of a um, not a trick question, but it's a question that fools people. Um, so. Uh, Let's here's the table. We already looked at the table when solving the problem. We have two columns here. We have the uh, linear expansion coefficient, and uh, you know, so that's linear, the alpha, and we have the average volume expansion of coefficient for liquids and gases. I mean, you can't have a line of acetone or a line of gasoline. You have a volume of gasoline, and that's beta. Um, so. Uh, the uh, alpha is the linear expansion coefficient, and um, these ga gases and liquids are, have a volume expansion coefficient of beta. And we're going to discover that it, really it's just uh, the volume expansion is is just um, if you work out all the math. I mean, here they they uh, height, length, and weight. Uh, when they get here to this, uh, uh, the third the third line, LWH uh, one plus alpha delta T cubed, it, it's just that's the expanding of you multiply one plus alpha delta T three times, you get that equation. Um, and when you when you finally come down to it, you see that it's uh, the beta beta is equal to three alpha. So they go through this whole derivation, and that it's good if, uh, to go through the derivation to see the math that they're using. Um, okay, if you're asked to make a very sensitive glass thermometer, which of the following working liquids would you choose? And so you go back to the um, the volume expansion here, and look which one has the the highest, and the highest is uh, uh, gasoline. Uh, the 9.6, the 9.6 is greater than uh, the 4.85. Those are all above air and helium. Those are all 10 to the minus four. So gasoline is the, has the highest average volume 
uh, expansion coefficient. So let's get back to the question. If you were asked to make a very sensitive glass thermometer, you know, where the, the uh, material inside would move with the small changes of temperature, you would choose gasoline because it has the highest um, volume of expansion. It might be dangerous to, to use, but it would give you a very, very uh, sensitive glass thermometer. Okay, two spheres are made of the same metal and have the same radius, but one is hollow and the other is solid. The spheres are taken through the same temperature increase. Which sphere expands more? Well, think back to the washer demonstration that I showed you earlier. Uh, and by that, you'd, you'd, uh, uh, you could conclude that they expand by the same amount. Okay. Now, the unusual behavior of water. That water has a lot of amazing and beautiful properties. Uh, and this is certainly one of them. Uh, the water acts uh, normally as you uh, decrease the, at, at high temperatures. It has one density. Let's say, at a, uh, you know, of course, if it's 100 degrees C, it's, it's turning into vapor. But as at, 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 let's say, about 95 degrees, it has a den density of 0 0.96 uh, grams per cubic centimeter. As it cools, the density gets... Um, gets uh, it gets more and more dense. You can see it at it, it, uh, oh, at about what forty. It's about oh, zero point nine nine grams per cubic centimeter. So between uh, like six and seven degrees, the uh, the the surface temperature is getting getting um, more dense. And as it gets more dense, it sinks to the bottom. And the next layer gets cooler and sinks to the bottom, and you get this this circulation of the 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 cooler water because it's denser going down, and and until you get to a, uh, until you get to four degrees, and at four degrees, it becomes excuse me, it becomes less dense, and so it it starts forming ice, and it actually begins to float, which forms a protective layer. Uh, you know, as you know, if you have a glass of iced tea, the ice floats. It's less dense than than the, uh, or just a glass of water. It's less denser than the water that it's holding, and so it it floats, forms this sheet of ice on the water, and and the water will never get below um, uh, four degrees, and it protects the aquatic life that's underneath it. If it did just freeze and sink, freeze and sink, it would kill all the 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 aquatic life in the in the lake or whatever uh, river i mean uh today is uh uh january 30th and you look up north and i mean you see the uh rivers in the uh in the news they're they're got these big ice chunks and so um, it's a real problem when you get real real cold um let's see and, and it shows you here the uh, a little river and it's, it looks like it's got ice on top of it. Um, okay, and we'll stop right there. Oh, there is one thing I failed to mention in the last, I, I mentioned it in our face-to-face -face lecture, but I didn't mention it on the, um, on the video. There's, there's four, uh, four points uh, that are important to remember in, um, on the Celsius scale. Uh, we, of course, you know that, that the zero degrees is set for the freezing point of water. Zero, water freezes at zero degrees C. Water boils at 100 degrees C. So uh, there's a second point. Um, the, there's a, at minus 40 degrees C, it's also minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And the last number to remember is 37, uh, 37 degrees C is body temperature, 98.6. So we have 100, the boiling point of water, zero, the freezing point of water, minus 40 is the same as, minus 40 Celsius is minus 40 Fahrenheit, and 37 degrees is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, body temperature. I forget, failed to mention those. I should have mentioned them in the last video, but I'm mentioning them now to catch up. Uh, so let's end the lecture here. And... Uh, next time we'll talk about the macroscopic dis description of an ideal gas. Uh,
stop the share, stop the recording.